<coughs> Thank you, Count Corley. Um, Taoiseach, this morning uh, I understand you met with Maria Cahill, uh, and although I'm not aware of what transpired in terms of your conversations, I've no doubt that you would have been uh, very taken back um, by her story uh, and by her account uh, of being raped as a young 16-year-old. Uh, in addition to that, there were attempts made earlier when this story was revealed to undermine her credibility. But I think the story in relation to the IRA interrogation into her abuse is one I think that would shake any person who uh, had, has had the opportunity to hear it. Now, in this House over the last decade, Tisha, we've had many debates relating to the issue of child sex abuse, ranging from the swimming abuse inquiry many years ago, uh, to the inquiry into industrial schools, to the various inquiries in Cloyne, Ferns uh, and Dublin uh, and across the board. And politicians from all parties, from all parties, were very anxious that those debates would take place and they participated fully um, in them. Because in the interest of the victims of such abuse, in the sense that those institutions had covered up and had transgressed the rights of victims. The Sinn Féin party itself, and it, for many deputies, some of that material at the time was uncomfortable. People could hardly believe what they were hearing on those occasions. I remember it well, and I was involved in some of the inquiries myself in initiating them. And Sinn Féin deputies were to the fore in condemning the Catholic Church. When Deputy First Minister Mark McGuinness said that Cardinal Brady, he said Cardinal Brady should resign when, he, when it was revealed that as a young priest, Cardinal Brady was secretary to a secret inquiry that swore two young boys were abused to silence. We know that Deputy, our Deputy Leader of Sinn Féin, Mary Lou Macdonald, said anyone found to have covered up the abuse of children should be arrested and face the full rigours of the law. We know that Maria Cahill was Thank you. sworn Question, to please. silence, Tisha, by Sinn Féin IRA. And we know that and just read her father's testimony uh, during the week. And what I want to put to you, Tisha, we learn of another victim in the Irish Independent this morning. They got three options. We'll execute him, you can execute him, or we'll expel him. Expelling means moving to another parish. And when you read the leader of Sinn Féin's blog on this issue, Deputy Adams, he says that on occasions the IRA shot them. We don't know what happened on the other occasions, or sometimes they expelled them. Expelling means moving to another parish. Thank you. And he did say it, in fairness, he qualified it by saying it wasn't appropriate to shoot them. Tisha, I have a number of questions to put to you. Will the government, first of all, ensure, and I asked this yesterday, and I asked it Sorry, sincerely. Sorry, we're way over time. I appreciate that. Will the government ensure that there's a comprehensive dialogue debate on this issue, like we had any time other abuse in other institutions came up? We should have that. Secondly, can I confirm whether the Minister for Justice has discussed this issue or this case with Minister David Ford? and an ordinary executive because of the obvious cross-border uh, dimension to this. And thirdly, will the government give consideration to creating a facility uh, to enable victims of such abuse um, at the hands of Sinn Féin IRA uh, to come forward and tell their story in confidence so that the full uh, story can come out? Thank you. Please show. I, I I had the uh, opportunity and indeed the privilege of uh, meeting with uh, Maria Cahal for the last uh, hour and a half or so. Uh, this is uh, a courageous, confident, uh, brave young woman who's a force to be reckoned with. Uh, she overcame the horror of being raped uh, to face down the IRA, its generals, uh, secret or otherwise. Uh, everybody in this house knows the, the horror of rape, that it's, not just, a, it's a, not just a violation, it's about control and it's about, it's about power. And while in, in that frightening situation, um, her, her own control was taken from her, she never uh, ceded in any way her own power, can't call it. And it's that power and that sense for truth that brought her here to Leinster House and that brought her to government buildings this morning. Um, so when innocence is defiled, uh, clearly there's, there are consequences when people have the courage to speak out. 
You asked three questions, uh, Deputy Martin. The answer to the first question is yes. We will facilitate a comprehensive debate on this matter. Um, I can't confirm for you whether Minister Fitzgerald has spoken to Minister Ford or not, but you can take it from me that she will. I think we need to reflect on the third question that you mentioned um, in regard to having some facility or opportunity or um, um, method of having people who wish to come forward with, with their stories here, that this should happen and that it should happen in confidence. I think that's an issue that the House needs to reflect on, to do that in the best way possible. But I would say this, as you mentioned in respect of what happened with the Catholic Church and sexual abuse, it's very, it very much mirrored in what's happened here with IRA sexual abusers uh, who are members of Sinn Féin. And, uh, it's clear from my conversations this morning with Maria Cahal that there are a number of very clear questions that need to be answered. One of those questions concerns the movement of people from Northern Ireland involved in the IRA who were moved down to this jurisdiction, and they're still here. People know who they are, people know where they are, people know of their activities. It's time that these people spoke up and answered these questions. Thank you. Um, I want to thank the Taoiseach um, for his response, and I welcome the fact that there will be a comprehensive Doyle debate um, on this issue, just as there has been in relation to other uh, issues and scandals, and particularly as, you, as I've outlined quite a number of them. Um, and uh, at that time, people didn't say people were being political or whatever in discussing abuse within the Catholic Church. Because uh, I can recall uh, Deputy Mary Lou Macdonald's words in relation to the abuse of children in the Dublin Diocese. And it says that the report on clerical sex abuse, Deputy Macdonald says, of children in Dublin exposes how the most powerful men in the Catholic Church in the Dublin Diocese conspired to protect abusers of children. It was a gross betrayal of generations of children, unquote. The most powerful men within the IRA interrogated victims of abuse at the hands of leading members of the IRA. That happened. The most powerful men. And the most powerful men conspired, conspired to protect the abusers. Thank you. And swore the victims to silence. It's unpalatable to have to say that. There might be members in the House who may not like me saying it. But there's actually no getting away from it. It's an unpalatable truth. But the difficulty here, the power and the fear here, was much greater than anywhere else. And victims thank will thank tell you, you that. Question, so the point is, we do need to reflect, Tijek, and I would put to you to give it very serious consideration, consideration on how one could facilitate <coughs> victims coming forward to tell their story. Thank you. I, I will give it serious consideration, uh, Deputy Martin, and I take the advice of uh, people in the House here as to how best that might be able to be put in place. You are correct. The most powerful people in the IRA uh, conspired in this. And I think it's reprehensible that a young woman of this courage and, and bravery should be kicked about in the last week. The goalposts have changed and been changed deliberately. And I note from Deputy Adams's comments last night, the first connection with the IRA in his statement outside the Mansion House. And perhaps when, when Deputy Adams has the opportunity, he might confirm for the people of the country down here whether or not Maria Cahill was required to attend at a meeting with or the rapist and three other men to discuss this matter. I think that's a central issue here about a young woman raped and sexually abused being required by powerful people within the IRA to attend at a meeting and to have to face her abuser. Thank you.